had a dream this morning. I'm not too sure, you know, the importance, the meaning for, about dreams, but it was kind of interesting. And it correlates to a new book that I am publishing on Mirai Industries, which to me at this moment is probably the best company in the world to work for. My dream was about the island of Barbados. I used to work there many years ago. I had a data entry company in the island of Barbados. And this particular island was one of the nicest places I've ever been to in the globe. I've been to 52 countries, and this is one of the best. First of all, the sun. <laughs> the sun is magnificent. Um, some of the best sandy beaches in the world. Um, some of the nicest people that you could find. But these people were, um, even though they lived, in a sense, they lived in paradise. Paradise meaning, you know, they pretty much had enough food. They had the sea with all the fish. They had the warmth. They lived in a climate that people would pay a fortune to go to visit. It was a British island, a favorite place for the rich British to go to. And wonderful hotels. And I said the swimming and the beaches were just wonderful. And so these people lived here. But when you live in a particular climate, you don't fully appreciate it, especially when you begin to compare yourself to other societies. Because Barbados, even though they were so beautiful, so beautiful, most of the people were poor. They had very little money. No, no real manufacturing. The only real wealth that came to them was from the tourists that came down. So here's a society with people living in a sense in a wonderful area, but having very little material things for a successful life. So I, in the dream, was a consultant. And my job was to help them, to uplift them, to give them some mechanism that they could succeed in their life based upon what they wanted. And what came to me is that um, if each person could differentiate themselves from others and work on that differentiation, work on developing their skills to the highest, that they individually could succeed and their society would acquire great wealth, great satisfaction. Now, what do I mean by differentiating yourself? Is say that you were an artist. If you could paint your art from a great depth inside you differently, using colors, you know, using lighting, using things differently and create your masterpiece, your masterwork of art. If you, if you were a carver, you know, that you could take a piece of wood and carve something. If you could do something different, if you could uh, produce perfume, because they had wonderful flowers there, if you could produce lotions and perfumes and try to get as close to the original sense of the perfume as you could and then maybe package it into a very nice container that people would really like, a nice jar, a nice bottle, etc. So the idea is that for each person to see what kind of talent they had or what kind of talent they could develop to bring out the real creative potential that existed inside each one, they could live individually, magnificently, and collectively, they could have a very rich and wonderful society. The key is differentiation. The key is self-reliance. Now, when I was in the island of Grenada, and I loved it, loved working there, I have many wonderful stories about it. Um, I would go on the beach, and the people, the locals, very often were there to meet the tourists, try to sell them something. But what would they sell you? They would sell you baskets. All the baskets were the same. They would sell you hats. All the hats were the same. They would sell you carvings made out of coconut. They all looked the same. 
That means everybody emulated everybody else and they all lived at pretty much the lower level within their minimal means because they didn't they didn't address their real deep ability to differentiate themselves and to bring out something creatively different. This is what Mirai has done. Mirai is a company in Japan that makes electrical equipment. About a thousand people. And this is the model that came from the top. The owner of the company, Mr. Yamada, said, whatever you make, make it different than what the competition makes. So Mirai started about 45 years ago making electrical sockets. You know, these are the sockets, the metal cases that are in all the walls in your houses and offices. And this is where you put in the electrical switches. Just a simple piece of metal, shape of a box, with holes in it. And the holes would allow the cable to come in. Well, a number of companies were, were making this switch box. But Mirai did it differently. Mirai put many more holes into the box. The common box just had a few holes. They did many more holes to allow the cables to come in from other directions, just to be different. Mirai um, made 80 different varieties of switch boxes. Now, most companies only make three. But Mirai ended up making 80 because the requests that they got from their customers. With their 80 boxes, Mirai only makes money in three of them. I mean, 77 of those boxes lose money. But Mirai does it to satisfy the customer. And Mirai now sells 80% of all the switch boxes in Japan. 80%. Um, even though the three you could buy from other people, people are pretty loyal to Mirai because of the way Mirai serves them. 80, eight, that means they have 80% of the market share and they've sold 60 million switch boxes since they've been in business. Just a little story about, and we'll talk more about Mirai and what a fabulous company this is. Um, and thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this little vignette. Thank you.